Hi everyone, it's Miss Abby from Evelyn Metter Branch Library. I'm here today to do a little scratch program online where we'll learn how to make a combination lock so you can make your own escape room like the one that I posted earlier. Hopefully you have opened up this lock demo program in another tab or another window and you can put this video side by side with the um, with your scratch window. So for this, you don't need a Scratch account to play with this, but you will need a Scratch account if you wanna save it and come back to it later. So you'll have to get your parents to, um, if you're under, I think 13, you'll have to get your parents to help you set that up with an email address. If you're just gonna play, don't worry about the rest of it, but if you are gonna wanna save it, go ahead and create your Scratch account now and make sure that you're logged in and that your name is showing up here. So first, we're going to, when you're on this lock demo page, you'll click see inside. Now, if it's not something that I made, you should see a little green remix button up here. Go ahead and click that, or maybe over on this area, there should be a green button that says remix. Go ahead and click that button and that will basically save a copy of the file for you so that you can come back to it later. Um, if you don't click remix, you won't be able to save your changes. It'll just save as this blank program. Uh, so this demo program, I've already got the lock uploaded, the picture of the lock. So I did that by, if you open a new project, there's a cat, you click the delete button, the cat goes away, and then you click upload sprite down in this corner. So you can also just click choose a sprite and you can pick any of these. But for today, we're going to go ahead and use the uploaded combination lock. So I've also already set the combination lock to have two costumes. We have an open costume and a closed costume so that we have some measurable visual uh, success when we have solved the lock. Our first step, we're gonna start with events. And so you can shortcut click any of these over here. Scratch is pretty simple. This is called coding blocks where you just drag and drop blocks into your window and things will happen. So first we're gonna start with a win flag clicked and that's basically how we're gonna start our program. You can really, you can use any of these if you want. If you wanna do sprite clicked, so you would click on the lock itself or there's these message broadcasts which I use heavily in the escape room um, or the space key pressed, you can do any key actually. But for simplicity today, we're gonna to do with win flag clicked. First thing we have to do is set our combination. We're going to use a variable to do that. So we're going to start by making a variable. We're going to call it combination. Very creative here. You can actually call it anything you want as long as you know what it means. But for clarity, I like combination. So we're going to start by setting the combination to something, anything. Uh, I'm going to do 270. So, and now you'll see over here it says combination zero. So I can actually click the flag and it'll change it now to 270 because that's what we did. We said when flag clicked, set combination to 270. Now this wouldn't be a very secure lock if it had the combination right up here for everyone to see. So over here in your variable tab, you can uncheck that blue checkbox and it will hide. You can also use these code blocks here, the hide and the show blocks to make it go away. So we can actually just hide it if we want and that will also make it go away. We click here. So I'm actually going to go ahead and leave this hide variable up here because we are going to use it later. Now that we've got our combination and we've got it hidden, we're going to ask people what it is. So that's a sensing block. There are these bright blue ones and we're going to use the ask block. So we're going to ask, enter combination and wait. So now we'll go click our flag again. Oop. And it says enter combination. And then there's a little toolbar here that asks you to do it. So nothing happens either way. If we type in the wrong combination or if we type in the right combination, because we haven't coded it to do anything yet. I hate to tell you this, but the computer is going to do what the code tells it to do. The computer is not going to do anything that the computer is not told to do. So if the computer is not doing what you expect it to do, it's probably because of the way the code is written. Since nothing happens, we are going to throw in the if then that will tell it to do things. 
So I'm going to go ahead and grab a little blue answer bubble now because it's right here. Um, and I'm going to need it. So I'm going to grab the events. Nope, control. I don't know why they use two such similar colors right next to each other, but there it is. So we're going to do an if then block. So you'll notice the if then block has a little hexagon shape in it here. So that means we have to put a hexagon block into it. So we're going to grab a green hexagon block and we're going to fit it in. You'll see it lines up with that white outline. Click. So then we can take if answer equals and the answer is not 50. So you could type in 270 if you want. But that's really going to be a messy way to do it. If you want to change this combination later, you'd have to change this down here. That's why we made a variable button. So we drag our variable in, and just like with that hexagon, these little oval shapes, they fit into the ovals. So if answer equals combination, then how about we switch our costume to open. So we'll hit the flag. Let's try a wrong one first. Nothing happens. Click the flag again, do our correct combination, and it opens. So now let's maybe, what happens if we get it wrong? We want to, we want something to happen if we get it wrong. So then we're going to do an if then, an if then else, not just an if then. So to, in order to get rid of a block, anywhere you click, the top block here is going to be what drags away. So you're going to start by clicking, so see, the top block always drags. So if you want to get rid of a middle block, take the block under it and go like that. We're going to leave that in. Oops. So we're going to take the if then block away and put the if then else block. And we can just drag our answer combination, switch costume to open, and then just drag this over there to delete it. So now we want to say what happens if we're wrong. Uh, I like a sound effect for that. So we will go to the sounds. We've got a ta-da already in our little block here. Add a sound. We want a sad sound for this. So this one I like. Here. Yeah. Kind of a, mm, you're wrong. But not too loud and obnoxious because you're going to hear it a lot. So we'll go back to the code now. And we're going to start sound low boy. Hit the flag. Oh, our lock did not go back to closed. Not because the computer's wrong. I never told it to do that. When flag clicked, hide variable, set combination, enter combination. So we got to go back to looks. And we're going to switch costume. It can actually go anywhere here because these are all going to happen pretty instantaneously. We're going to switch it to closed. So stop. There we go. Enter combination. Let's see what happens if we get it wrong. Oops. Low boy. Hit the flag. Let's get it right. It's open. I think we need a sound effect for open too, which is why I have the ta-da in there. So we'll go back to the sound panel and we'll start sound ta-da. Let's, let's do that. I like this. Now, this is great, um, but we can actually upgrade this a little and make it so that you don't have to click the flag every time for each attempt. So in order to do that, we're going to go back to those controls and we can put in a repeat block. So this one, wherever you drag the top part of it, see it shows a little shadow and it shows that block going around the other block. We're going to go above enter combination and do like three tries. So no, no, no. Um, let's see what happens if we get it right. Well, everything happened, but it kept asking us because we told it to repeat three times. So instead of just repeating three times, we're going to grab our inner combination block, drag it out of a repeat block, and then throw that one over there. We're going to do a repeat until. And again, I've got that little hexagon in there. So I can either go down here and grab one of these hexagon shapes, or I can just right click, duplicate, repeat until the answer equals combination. So let's stop it and go. See, it's just 
just going to let us keep going until we get it right. And then it stops. If we want to give people only so many chances to get it right, we can do this same thing. Instead of repeating until the answer equals combination, we'll go and we'll create another variable. I'm going to call this one attempts. And so now we'll, we can, and actually I'm going to leave this one showing because I want people to see how many times they've tried it. So we're going to grab attempts and another hexagon here, put that in, put it until attempts equal three. So you got it right, but now it's just giving us three attempts, just like when we did three repeats. So we're going to use the OR block. We're going to grab our little green block here, snap it into that hexagon, and the same with our answer. So now this is going to give us three attempts OR until we get it right. So let's... Oh, except nothing's happening. We didn't tell the attempts to count. So we need to change attempts. Let's see, where do we put it? We're going to put it right here under ask combination. So it's going to change attempts by one. So see now each time I click, it tells me attempts. Now after three attempts, it just goes away. But I never told it to reset the attempts. So if I play, nothing's going to happen now. So just like we had to set the combination and switch our comp costume, we need to set our attempts to zero every time we click flag. Three attempts, or make sure it still stops if we get it right. <laughs> now, after we've got our three attempts and they've got it wrong, maybe we want to send a little message saying that you got it wrong. So up here we can do, under looks, we'll grab this say hello for two seconds. And then we can change this to say incorrect for two seconds. You can also change this to any number, but two seconds is definitely long enough. It's longer than you think. So if we go to play, we'll say no. Oh, and there it says incorrect up at the top and then goes away. But it still says incorrect even if I get it correct. So we definitely need to make this stop. So again, we're going to do this is under events. Nope, it's under control. We're going to use the stop. And it's really important we're going to change this from stop all, which, well, here I'll show you. If we get it right, it stops everything, including the sound. So we want to change it to just stop this script. Now, if we want to add an air of randomness to this, we can go back to operators, pick random, and set our combination to be a random number. So now I don't even know what the combination is, but it's also only one digit, so I can just type one, nope, two, three, that wasn't it. So now I kind of want to know what it was. So that's when we can go back to these variables and click show variable combination. And I'm going to turn it back on right here because now it's under attempts. So you can drag and drop these anywhere you want. I want to leave attempts up at the top, but I want to put combination like right here in the middle where it's obvious. Yeah, definitely like it right there. So now I'm going to have it show the variable combination, which was four, which I did not guess earlier. So I will try this again. It was eight, so that's exciting. Uh, first try, but I really wanted to actually get it wrong a few times first, so let's try. It says incorrect for two seconds and then shows the combination. So I think it would be better, let's eat again, interesting. Show the combination, then say incorrect, because the combination doesn't take two seconds.
So we'll try again. It was five, which I didn't try. So this lets you, if you've got the code hidden, if somebody's looking in full screen mode, then they can see what the combination is, if, even if you set it. So if I go back to 270, and I don't have to delete this, I can just take it out. Go to full screen, hit play. Uh, let's see. No. No. And it'll tell me what the combination was. So that just adds a little bit of, oh. So we can put the random back in if we want. And we can always change these numbers. You can change these attempts to five. Um, the important thing is to not change this to five because that will change your attempts by five every time you make an attempt. Which I guess you could do, but then you probably want to change your repeat until attempts equal number. But the important thing you want to set a zero at the beginning. There are a lot of other ways to personalize this. You can pick any of the sounds from this sound library. Yeah, some of them are kind of annoying, but you can choose any of those sounds. Um, you can change what it's going to ask. You can change the combination. I used this a variety of in a variety of ways in order to create the escape room earlier. So this, but this is the basic formula for how I did it. If you enjoyed this, we offer Scratch classes at the library pretty regularly. Um, you can, we always do at least one thing every month with coding. So you can always come to that, check our calendar, and see when our next coding event is. And I will hopefully see you there. Thanks, everyone. Bye.